thank you. Uh, well, this morning we have uh, had the last meeting of the State Disaster Management Group uh, as a result that was established as a result of the uh, monsoonal rains that have affected and flooded our state for the, really since Christmas Eve. The State Disaster Management Group was activated on Christmas Eve with the appointment of uh, Deputy Commissioner Ian Stewart as the State Disaster Coordinator. Uh, this group will be activated again if we see any further need in any major disaster that might come to us before the end of our wet season. But this group has now had its final meeting. It's just tying up a number of uh, loose ends, if you like, and we now move, importantly, into recovery phase and the beginnings of the establishment of the Reconstruction Authority. Uh, nevertheless, we are continuing to be ready for anything that might come our way. Uh, the briefing from the Weather Bureau indicated that uh, we have seen the monsoonal trough uh, retreat north where it's likely to stay for some time. However, the monsoonal trough does have a number of cloud clusters uh, around the Gulf and the Coral Sea that could develop into a tropical cyclone and the Weather Bureau is monitoring that very carefully. Uh, they believe there is a, only a small possibility of a tropical cyclone developing before Australia Day but that possibility lifts to a moderate possibility after Australia Day. So we, whether or not that develops, we know that we are by no means uh, out of our wet season and we'll be continuing to get regular briefings from the Weather Bureau and monitoring carefully. If we need to reactivate the State Disaster Management Group, that's what we will do. We have uh, a number of towns that are still seeing a lot of water around them. Uh, St George is facing a second peak uh, sometime uh, in the next uh, couple of days over the weekend. That, that peak is likely to be around 12.5 metres. Uh, the last one that they had last week was 13.2, so not as bad as their last one. And you saw that many of their levees held, but nevertheless, a second peak in St George of 12.5 metres. Unlike other peaks that St George has seen in the last 12 months, this one's last, likely to last for around, and the water is likely to sit there for three or four days, so that might pose uh, some issues that we might need to assist them with. Uh, as a result of the flooding that we saw in Gundawindi, the town of Talwood, uh, which is west, about an hour west of Gundawindi, that has uh, some 90 people in it, are facing a flood peak of uh, just over four metres, uh, and we're working with their local people there to determine whether that is likely to impact any homes. The... Um we're seeing a number of uh, evacuation centres closing as people are found alternative accommodation, uh, and we continue to be uh, we continue to uh, assess the damage in each one of those places. The number of deaths out of this event still remains at 20. Uh, however, this is out of the events since the 10th of January. However, police can now confirm that since the 30th of November, uh, Queensland has seen a total of 33 of, uh, deaths associated with flooding incidents somewhere across the state. So 20 deaths since the uh, 10th of January, but 13 prior to that. So since the 30th of November, more than 30 Queenslanders have lost their lives in flooding-related events. There's been an extraordinary uh, missing persons uh, exercise undertaken by the major incident uh, room with the Queensland Police Service. Since the 10th of January, they have had 489 persons formally reported as missing, and they have located, sorry, they have located 489 persons who were formally reported as missing as a result of flood-related uh, incidents. Of course, there remain nine people now who are continue uh, to be missing and uh, who we hold very grave fears for. The Deputy Commissioner will make uh, some comments about that. As we go into the recovery phase, we really need to count the, uh, the damage and to count the cost of this incident. And we're a long way, we're not there yet, but just to give you a sense of the size of the incident that we have dealt with here in, uh, in Queensland uh, over the uh, three weeks or so since Christmas Eve. The current estimate of the total number of houses across Queensland that saw flooding over their floorboards is 5,400 homes. The number of houses that were affected uh, in some way but not necessarily into, over the floorboards is 21,000. A further 15,000 had flooding into their yards uh, and that's caused some damage to that property. 
We've evacuated 3,600 homes and the number of people evacuated uh, numbers 5,900. That required the establishment over the last three weeks of 74 evacuation centres. There are currently in Queensland 1,900 uh, armed forces personnel who are part of the clean-up and the recovery. And the armed forces uh, in just uh, a little under three weeks have supplied uh, by army aircraft 680 tonnes of food and other supplies such as medical supplies or fuel. We currently have 37 recovery centres uh, which are out there making sure they're a one-stop shop for people to know their entitlements, uh, to find out local issues about their own local government areas as well as uh, state government and federal government assistance and financial help. In total, out of this one event since Christmas Eve, uh, well, I suppose it was a multiple series of events, but a rolling event since Christmas Eve, 97 Queensland towns have been impacted in some way, either flooded, in fact serious flooding, or completely isolated for a period of time by roads being cut. The latest estimates from the insurance industry, uh, they said the insurance claims now number 31,000, uh, totalling about $1.1 billion worth of claims. Just under a quarter of those, 24%, relate to vehicles, and 70, the remaining 76% of those 31,000 claims relate to property damage uh, or business interruption insurance. Of our 73 local government areas, 51 have had a disaster declaration uh, since these events started, and 14 of those local government areas have been severely impacted with very serious flooding. Uh, we, we are still uh, counting the tally of roads that are affected across Queensland, but local government estimate at the moment that just local government roads damage totals uh, some 90,000 kilometres of local government roads have seen some form of damage. Uh, so that's without federal highways, state roads or railways. So uh, we will continue to update uh, those, that data so you get a sense of the enormity of the task in front of us. Uh, can I conclude my remarks by uh, paying tribute firstly to all of those who helped us uh, get through this uh, at the front line, our local councils, all of our emergency and rescue workers, the ADF, the police, our army of volunteers in the tiniest towns and in the capital cities that have aided the clean-up. Can I offer on behalf of uh, all Queenslanders our sympathies and condolences to those families who have lost a loved one and who are now uh, going through the very sad business of funerals and coping with that loss. Uh, can I particularly thank everybody who has dug deep and contributed in one way or another to the $127 million uh, Premier's Relief Fund. Uh, that number continues to climb. We're continuing to see donations from around the world and around the country, uh, and that tells me that people do care about what happens in our state. And uh, that's been a great lift in our morale, so we thank you for it. I might invite, uh, I'll invite uh, the Deputy Commissioner to add to my comments in that regard. Premier, thank you. And uh, whilst I have been able today to recommend to the Premier and the State Disaster Management Group that my position as State Disaster Coordinator be terminated, that does not mean that the effort in response does not go on. Certainly there are a number of hotspots where local command will now take full responsibility for the response efforts and most of those areas the, the Premier has touched on, including places like Condamine, Thallon and Dirrambandi. Um, also, there is a huge task ahead of authorities, uh, particularly the police, in respect of the search that continues in the Lockyer Valley area. That search uh, may take weeks, if not months, to conclude. And on, in addition, the Queensland Police Service has a significant commitment of extra staff into all of those areas. But again, I would like to thank uh, not only all of the people that, that the Premier has mentioned, but I would, as, a, as the first State Disaster Coordinator, can I particularly thank the community of Queensland in the way that they have conducted themselves and responded to what has been one of the greatest challenges that our state has ever faced. Thanks, Premier. The, the um, dam guidelines that have been released, why haven't they all been released? Uh, well, my understanding is the only parts of the guidelines that haven't been released are the design diagrams, uh, and that's for security reasons. Uh, we don't want... The, basically to ensure that vandals or terrorists don't uh, get the design uh, diagrams of our dams. So there's no cover-up Absolutely not. And, and they will be made fully available to the Commission of Inquiry. 
the, the date on it is November 2009. So does that mean they weren't updated after Cabinet got the Bureau briefing of warning of dire times ahead? Uh, my understanding is that the manual uh, continue, has operated uh, in that way for a number of quite a while and that's the operations that they've been relying upon. Are you satisfied that they weren't updated after that briefing? These are all matters for the Commission of Inquiry and I don't intend to speculate uh, on technical engineering questions that uh, the inquiry has all the expertise required to answer. Are you concerned about the dual role of water storage and water supply? Uh, this dam is not the only dam uh, in the world that has both water supply and flood mitigation uh, effects. Uh, in fact, many dams have uh, those dual roles. Clearly, that will be an issue that the uh, Commission of Inquiry will also look into. Are you concerned by those emails that have been released regarding all of that? Uh, no, they are a normal part of doing business. Uh, the, uh, the South East Queensland Water Authority has an obligation to constantly update a range of authorities, including, for example, the Brisbane City Council's Flood Information Centre. That's what that information was doing, and that's a normal part of managing a disaster, constantly giving the information as it changes. And have you got any word on the King Tide, or is it too early? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I can't give you anything further on that. There's certainly no reports at this stage of any localised flooding, uh, but we'll be watching very carefully. And have you got any more details regarding homelessness and um, how many temporary houses you'll need, that sort of thing? Well, as I say, we know that we uh, current estimates indicate 5,400 people who have had some flood inundation over their floorboards. That would include a number of people who will uh, either be out of their home and it's uninhabitable now for many months, or they might be able to go back into it for a little while and then move out while the work is done. So uh, we're seeing a number of evacuation centres closed. The RNA evacuation centre is closed. Ipswich is closing a number, although QE2 Stadium will continue. Rockhampton closed theirs uh, today. And that means that people, every one of the people in the evacuation centre have found some form of temporary accommodation for now. It may only be a friend or family while we work with them to get something more permanent. And for some people it means they are going to be uh, moving a couple of times and that's not going to be easy. Yesterday we were able to formally identify one of the missing. As, as deceased? That's right. Um, have you got any idea where the, um, the, some of those donations are <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, we're seeing donations, uh, more than 30 million of those donations come from mums and dads going into banks and uh, some of the other collection points like supermarkets and that's just overwhelming. I think it's terrific. We have seen a couple of uh, major American corporations donate in the last uh, couple of days, uh, the Disney Corporation uh, and the American Tobacco Federation. Uh, these, I think, m you know, may well be as a result of the uh, Oprah Winfrey call to arms and we'll be analysing those donations that come in uh, for the next couple of days to see what the international response is to that, uh, to that request. Have you got figures on those? The Disney the I'm sorry, I can get them for you. Um, who's eligible uh, for that funding? Are small businesses eligible to... to the Disaster Relief Appeal Distribution Committee will be making uh, a range of decisions about how this money goes out, but they have already resolved that uh, this will be a fund for families and individuals whose homes have been affected. Uh, I know that there are also businesses that have been affected, but uh, I think most people who gave out of uh, their pockets uh, did so because they wanted to see families uh, and individuals uh, get back on their feet as quickly as they could. We do have a number of a range of business assistance through government funds, uh, and uh, I certainly encourage small business and agricultural producers to access those, uh, that assistance up to $25,000. But this relief appeal will go to families and individuals who've been personally affected in their own homes by water going over their floorboards and uh, considerably disrupting their lives. And, and does that include in those insured and not insured? That's a matter for the distribution committee, uh, and I understand they're, they're very close to making some announcements in relation to that. Just with the authority that you announced the other day, I'm just wondering, um, in terms of them deciding where, whether possibly people can rebuild in certain areas, those issues... Do you have any concerns that people may hold off on fixing their houses because they're unsure what decisions that authority will make? Uh 
Look, we'll be working with every one of the people who've been affected. And, you know, for some people it's going to be a reasonably straightforward process of uh, getting a builder, getting a cabinet maker, replacing the kitchen and the bathroom and then getting back with, on with their lives. For other people, they ha their homes are not going to be habitable, ever. They're going to have to demolish their homes and uh, that means a total rebuild. And before they rebuild, we would want to be talking with them about uh, if your home has gone completely underwater, uh, we'll, what, we'll be wanting to talk with every one of them about what they build and where they build. Uh, and, but we won't be doing you know, we won't be, we'll be doing everything in our power not to slow down the process. And uh, unfortunately for some people, regardless of anything, it is going to take some months. All those areas that went totally underwater, like Goodner and places mm. like that, are they all now to be considered where the homes can be rebuilt there on uh, look, we're not about to relocate Brisbane. That's just not possible, and we're not in a position to relocate you know, suburb after suburb. But we want to make some good common-sense decisions, and we have people who are saying they don't want to rebuild uh, in place where they may face a, a submerge effect, a, a flooding event like that again. So every one of these people will have, and these families will have to go through uh, their own decision-making process, well informed by their local councils and by the work of the authority, uh, remembering that it's not only happening here in Brisbane. We've got many small towns uh, where there are opportunities for people to, with their councils, and councils have already been talking to us, perhaps build somewhere differently uh, and, you know, on council land and council takes their land and makes it into a park. You know, there are some common sense solutions here uh, that if we work through them carefully, we'll actually end up with not only safer houses but better communities and a stronger, uh, a stronger state. And Grantham, uh, will that media ban be extended? Certainly I understand that the media uh, had an access uh, point yesterday and that will gradually open up uh, totally to media. We are, uh, are bound and guided by the wishes of that community. So at this stage, still next week, Deputy Commissioner, fully open, is that the, the plan? Or? Uh, certainly we're working towards next week, yes. When will the search and rescue effort be uh, changed? Will it, will it be able to be uh, certainly the, the initial focus of the search and rescue was around the habitable areas of Grantham uh, because of the devastation within that community um, and at Murphy's Creek. What we will now move towards is a wider search pattern that will include every property along the watercourse from Murphy's Creek right down to where the Lockyer system meets the Brisbane River uh, in terms of searching all debris piles, all buildings, all outhouses, out, out stations uh, in that area. Premier, can I just ask you about Pamela Newman's comments yesterday too about um, him saying the state government didn't join up the <coughs> property buyback scheme? What are your thoughts about that? Uh, well, my recollection of his comments were that there were many people who didn't take up the offer. And, uh, you know, that is an indication that some people feel so attached to their houses, even if their houses are in places that might expose them to some risk, uh, just indicates just how difficult some of this is going to be. And we appreciate uh, that and we'll work with everybody carefully and sensitively. He says that he proposed going 50-50 with the state government and was rebuffed. Look, I'm not aware of his comments, so I'm not going, to, not going to speculate. I'm not going to comment on something I didn't ha get to see. What I can say is that we are working in partnership with every local government, including Brisbane City Council. Uh, I think there is a really good understanding across all levels of government that no one can do this on our own. Local government can't do it on their own. State can't. Federal can't. But between all three of us, uh, I think we can make some good things happen, and we're, that's what we're determined to do. Uh, that's a matter for the federal government.